Mr. President, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, le 25 mai, on the 25th of May, voters are being asked to make a choice. The first choice is whether they are for or against the European project, and the second is whether they are for or against a Europe that is responsible, based on solidarity, or else divided and polarized. We have already made this choice. We made it at the beginning of the crisis. We fought for the stability of the Eurozone in its entirety, and uh, we have won this battle. Without this victory, we would not be in a recession today, but in a depression, and not only in a handful of countries, but in all countries. Without a single currency, the common market would be jeopardized, and the European Union, as a consequence. We have done an enormous amount of work at the European Council with the Member States, at the European Parliament, and at the Parliament, at the Commission, in order to do away with the ex existential doubts that were threatening the Eurozone. Some of the Member States, some of our colleagues, ministers, presidents, gave proof of extraordinary courage. I would like to pay tribute to them. We are very grateful to them. They saved their country and have saved the European Union. But the efforts that were made were hard. Mistakes of the past need, needed to be uh, corrected. Economies needed to be put on another course. But also, without the euro, all of this, or almost, all of this would have been inevitable and necessary. Right now, there are renewed prospects for growth and jobs. Growth is back, slower than expected, but stronger than expected in over the past few months. There are going to be new measures to promote youth employment and breathe some life into our small and medium ex enterprises that have trouble accessing finance in some of our countries. Dear friends, there is some hope, a ray of hope after so much, so many years of suffering. The results are there. Ireland is an example for many, many in Europe. Notre strategy. Our strategy. The Irish strategy was the right one in order to secure the future. We adopted a long-term approach. We resisted people who wanted to increase deficits and debts. Now than five years ago, the Eurozone is more integrated. But we have to do a lot more to bring down structural unemployment and poverty. Both were already too high before the financial crisis and in some countries already in the 90s. We have managed to save the Eurozone and the Union itself from collapse. But we cannot miss the other rendezvous with history, a Europe that is more socially coherent with fewer inequalities, with more lasting jobs, a Europe sufficiently economically resilient to finance the social models that the world envisages, a fair Europe, a continent less fractured and happier than it is today, a Europe not dominated by fear, by hate-mongering, by intolerance, but by hope, by solidarity and understanding. We need a joint effort by the European institutions and by the Member States to further build this Europe, our Europe. Dear friends, we live in a dangerous world where a united, determined union is greatly needed. The people of Ukraine made a decisive choice in favour of our European values. It was and is a choice 
for a civilization. They are on the right side of history. And all of us here today pay tribute to those who have died or were wounded for that cause, our common cause. And it reminds me what Abraham Lincoln once said in his famous speech in Gettysburg, and I'm quoting, that this dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government by the people, for the people, and of the people shall not perish from the earth. The people of Ukraine refu refused to live longer in a culture of lies, bribes, manipulation, blackmail, and poverty. We must support them on the road that they have chosen, also in those dangerous days. We cannot forget our friends also in Georgia and in Moldova who also crossed the river. The countries of the Union want to live in peace with all countries on our continent. And we stand ready to cooperate more closely with those who share our values. The old world, the world of before 1990, before the fall of the Berlin Wall, has vanished forever. It may never, never come back. And we have to make that clear. And we have made it clear in our European Council of yesterday. We are on the side of those who want to share a society based on democracy and on justice. And that's why we gave our support also to a lot of African countries, not because it was in our economic interest, but because we share a common enemy, extremism, polarization, intolerance, terrorism. The Union is the biggest donor of development aid, the biggest donor of humanitarian aid in the world. Let us be proud on this. Our Europe is a generous Europe. Of course, from time to time we failed. Of course, we were not always coherent and or not always sufficiently united. But a new Europe is being shown to the world. I know this may sound strange in a growing Euro-negative climate, but we have good reasons to hope. Not because we are resorting to the pep talk so common to election campaigns. No, because we have arguments to hope. And let us speak up for Europe. Let us use words of confidence and words of determination. We are not a lost continent, and there may be no lost generation. History is made by men and women, and the men and women of Europe can and will build a better future. And that is also my message to the future leadership of the European Union. We, the current leadership, we did our duty. I will leave with a peaceful conscience. It is up to our successors to write a new chapter in the history of our Union. And the EPP, with its manifesto and its candidates, has won again to play a decisive role. And this morning, I think at one of the founding fathers of our political movement, Wilfried Martens, a man with a strong European conviction, an authentic Christian Democrat, a great Belgian statesman and the longest serving prime minister ever, a man who should be still here among us. And we can only offer him and his widow, Meet Smith, our gratitude. But we can offer him also an EPP that will remain the most important and the finest group in the European Parliament. And by the way, they had the finest leader, our current new president, Joseph Dole. A strong European People's Party. That's also my wish, my hope. Dear friends, the 25th of May has to be the most lovely, loveliest day of the year. It will be our day, the day of Europe. 
our Europe. Thank you.